the cookie. All right, so let's just redo this chart. Matter of fact, let's just redo this chart. I have a big habit in setting alerts everywhere. All right, so first, when it comes to trading, first, I want to say that when it comes to trading in general, you always need to understand what trend you're in, what, what state of the market are you in, and how you can break it down. So whenever you're trading, let's say, a, in, this, in this standpoint, we'll be saying a downtrend, right? Whenever you're trading a downtrend, the only thing you should be looking for in a downtrend is the lows in the market, the swing lows, because this is areas where you want to sell. So if you're focused on swing lows, you'll be focusing on things like this, this, or this is an equal low. You'll be focused on things like this, this. I'm going to just go ahead and just like not do this to myself and just copy and paste it. I don't think I can copy and paste circles, but this, this, and so forth, right? And the reason why this is important is because the swing, the swing lows in a downtrend are in areas where price is going to tell you what it's going to do. This is an area where price is going to tell you, hey, under this swing low, I'm going down to make this swing low. And this is important because this is how you make trading so much easier for yourself. If you make trading easy for yourself, which I'm fin to explain in this whole Zoom, then it won't be as complicated as you think, or it won't be looked at as complicated as you think. Some people are beginners in here, and they're probably looking at it like, well, I don't know what's going on right now. But if you trade this way that I'm going to show you, it will all make sense. It will all make sense. All right, so first, to help people out, I would say if you're on your phone, I would say get out your laptop or whatever the case might be. I want you guys to pull this up because I know I tell you guys about this and I'm pretty sure some of you guys probably don't pull this up. So I'm going to show you all how to pull this up and what to do with it. Right? Um, pivot point highs and lows It's not some crazy indicator that's going to tell you where price is going to go. This is to help you learn how to mark up your swing highs and mark up your swing lows. So let's get to it. All right, so pivot points, highs and lows. I put this thing on like 30 times. Here's the settings for it. It's just 1010. Mine's is white and black, but it doesn't really matter about all this. It really doesn't. But yeah, this is the settings. Nothing's different. This comes default, right? So when it comes to your highs and lows, right? We're going to start here. We're going to start here. And I was going to do this one, but I didn't mark this one, but it's still a good swing low because that was the low that was made, a level of support, and then it got broken. But I'm going to just start with this one because this is the one that I used. And this is, this is important because this swing low, anything under this swing low is considered a, a bearish indication. Anything under the swing low would be considered a bear, bearish indication. And that is telling you that price wants to go lower than the swing low that's here. Because think of it as, oh my God, I never use this, but think of it as like a teacup or something, right? And something's getting poured into the teacup. Something's getting poured into the teacup. It bounces off and then comes out of the cup and then falls to the ground, right? That's kind of sort of like how it is. Something is poured into the teacup. This is the swing low. This is the swing low. It's falling down where somebody's pouring. Like, how do I explain that? Um, the swing low, it ends up bouncing at the bottom of the cup, coming out of the cup, and then falling down, if that makes sense. So with that being said, if it's falling down, that means it's most likely to drop on the floor, to drop or go, to, or go lower, whatever term you want to use in this scenario. So the whole objective... The whole objective is to find out where price is telling you it wants to go. So as we can see here, 15,254 was a swing low. 15,255 255 is a swing low. 15,252 was a swing low. With this being said, 
you also have to remember in a downtrend, remember, there's a low, a lower high, a low, a lower high, a low, a lower high, low, lower high. Rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, right? So even though we know where our swing lows are at, now we have to figure out where our swing highs is at. Because once again, a downtrend, you don't want to see price break above these highs because this is not, this is not bearish. That's the, that's the word I was looking for. This is not bearish if price is breaking highs. It's only bearish when price is breaking lows and lows and lows. It's going down and down and down. So if you start seeing price break highs, you might want to stay on the lookout because remember, it can be the other way around. When you're looking for reversals, it's the same way. And I'm going to show you all an example of a reversal. Yeah, I'm going to show you all an example of a reversal and what you can be looking for. This was a, yeah, okay. I'm going to show you guys what you can be looking for. But it's pretty much the same thing. Price is going down, down, down. It breaks structure to this, um, to the upside. Break, break structure to the upside. Makes an indication that it wants to go up pulls back for a correction, and then comes back above this level and continues higher. But it's pretty much the same thing both ways around. So, All right. So now that we know that these are our swing lows, what are our swing highs? So as we can see here, price marked up our swing highs. This is the highest point of the market in this current time. At this point in time, this is our current high in the market. And then this is our current low. So all we have is this high and this low. This means that nothing in between here needs to be traded. Nothing here needs to be traded at all because we don't know which direction the market is gonna go because this is our low and this is our high. We don't know where price is gonna go until we wait. So this is like, this shift, shift, okay. This is, this is one week actually. This is actually one week of not trading the market. Yeah, from here to here. Yeah, that's one That's one whole trading week of not trading the markets. And you would have been trading Tuesday. This happened, yeah, this was Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday last week. And then you wouldn't have been trading until the next week on Tuesday. But I'm going to explain to you guys how, how trading works. Because some of you guys think that, oh, I can just make money every single day. And that's how it works. And I'm trying to make it easier for you, not harder for you. I used to be the dude that used to trade every single day and try to find the sell setup and the buy setup and the sell setup and the buy setup. And it just, it wasn't going to be long-term fruitful for me. Like it's going to, it's going to fuck up your head. I'm telling you that now, if you think, if you think not long-term, it's going to fuck up your head because you're going to be on the charts every single day, all day. You're not going to have any freedom. Like imagine if you would have just set this alert, if you would have just set this alert, and then price just kind of like hit your alert like a couple of days later, and then you check the charts. All right, so with that being said, we have um, price ending up breaking that level of support. So now this is our ding, 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 ding. It's like, yo, yo, I wanna sell, I wanna sell. So we don't trade this, and I'm gonna tell you why, is because we don't know how far it's gonna go down. But one thing I can tell you is it will correct itself because the reason why this is happening is because when it breaks out, think of all the millions of people. Let me let me just show you guys. Let me just show you guys. Let me just show you guys, right? There's up to 13.8 million stock traders. This can be also with um Forex too. I want to type in Forex. Right? There's over 10 million Forex traders in the world, 10 million in the world right now, like 10 million. Now, not everybody, and I told this to somebody yesterday, not everybody is trading with $200 or $1,000, bro. There's people out here that you wouldn't know that are wasting 50 grand, 60 grand, 100 grand, 500 grand. There's people out here because remember, you're trading for freedom. Trading is to give you freedom. Not so people don't come in for money all the time. They just want freedom. They want to be good at it so they can trade from their phone and they don't have to go to work. That's the whole idea of trading. Most most people come in for trading like, oh, I'm going to make a million and I'm going to buy a Lambo and that's it. But some people actually come into the game because they're like, oh, I'm tired of being a doctor. I just want to have freedom and spend time with my kids or some shit. That's the whole goal of trading. That's why people trade. 
because they want freedom. So you got to think about all the millions of people who are probably looking at this chart and they're like, oh, it's a breakout. So then they're getting they're getting their hopes up. They're putting all their money on the line when this price breaks out, thinking that this is the drop and it's going to go all the way down and everything's going to happen and they're going to make so much money and they don't have to work again. And that's how people think. So the market is taking advantage of that, right? So this is what normally most people will do, right? So we're just going to scale down just a tad bit, nothing too crazy. They see this breakout, right? They see this breakout. They're like, okay, let me get in for this trade. This is going to be a good trade. They don't know where the fuck price is going to go. They don't even know where price is going to go at all. They just know it broke, broke support, sell. It broke a level of support. That's all they know. It broke level of support. Let me sell it. And they're going to probably put their stop loss right, left, roughly right here above a previous structure because that's what most people teach. They mo mostly teach putting your stop loss above previous structure. I mean, it's not wrong, but in this scenario, you're going to see how you're going to get fucked over because the market knows, the market knows these price points. The, it knows that, hey, above previous structure, we can probably get most of the traders out of here. It's not called a stop point because I hate when that is used like, the market is not worried about you. It's just worried about the money that's going in, the money that it can take. It's not worried about you as an individual. It's worried about where the where the money is at. It's, it's worried about where the money is at, right? So um, I don't know why I deleted that. So people are getting in this trade. They probably got some TP like all the way down here because that's how people think. They, they're like, this one trade alone is going to get me up to a million dollars. I don't know why they think that, but they think this. And then they get stopped out later on because they're holding this trade, not knowing where price is going to go. They don't have no clue of where price is going to go. And then most people will just come over here like months ago, days ago, weeks ago. They'll come over here and try to use something from over here to determine their TP. And that is not what you want to do because most of the time price doesn't even repeat. Or price doesn't even use these same levels anymore. So you have to continue to go by these levels that are being created for you. That's why you wait. You wait for the market to tell you where it wants to go because it's going to tell you, it's going to tell you where your TP is at. It's going to tell you where your stop loss needs to be. It's going to tell you these things so you don't have to think twice about it. It's just a snap and a go. So we have our swing low here. It tells us ding ding ding, price is wanting to sell down to from. 15, 15, 255 is going to sell down to 15, 150. So every time price is under this level, that is where it's going to go. Then there's the, the correction part. The correction is to get out the traders because there's people buying, there's people I'm mean, selling the support and they're thinking that price is going to continue down, but it's not. It reversed on them, stopped them out. And this is also how people think is when they get stopped out of sales and they see prices going up, what are they going to do? This is literally common sense. They're going to get into buys because they're trying to make money fast. They're trying to get the money faster. They're trying to get every trade possible. They think they're missing out. They see all these candles going up and they're like, oh my God, it's just buying, it's buying. Let me get in for buys because it's buying up. They get into this trade and what happens? They get stopped out once again. And then you have us who are like, okay, price under this level, price under this level has already showed me that it can go down to 15, 105 or 150, my apologies. It can go to 15, 150, right? So with that being said, people like us, we're going to take sales under this level. We're going to have a little stop loss either here, or we can go to a smaller time frame when it goes right under this level or have it somewhere roughly in this area above the previous structure. Now, the reason why I'm not too big on where I set my stop loss at is because these are reaction zones. Stop losses are important. I would say 50 points when it comes to NAS or even 100 points to let it breathe. But when it comes to trading NAS and trading with the volume, you're going to see that most of the time when it's under these reaction levels or when it's under these levels or above these levels, that price normally just goes with the market and goes with whatever the structure is telling us. So and in most scenarios, when price goes under the zone, most likely it's already taking off because this is a zone where it's like, okay, I know that I sell down from this level. I'm not saying it's 100% all the time, but I've noticed that most of my positions that I take, 
and I trade it in session, it, it happens fast or it happens in like an hour or two. And I don't like the most drawdown I seen this week was like 20, 20 points. Yeah, the most drawdown I seen this week was like 20 points. And most of my stop losses are 50 points to 100 points. So back under this level, we're looking to target here. Now, the thing is, when it comes to TP levels and target levels, is these are decision. The way I'm teaching you how to trade is you're making decisions in the market where you're trying to trade with the trend. You're trying to catch whatever the trend is. So in this scenario, you will be targeting from here to here. And I remember I was targeting here to here, close roughly right around here. This was like before, this was before the market even really opened for real. It was like 10. Yeah, it was 10 o'clock. And I was done by 10 o'clock. This was like at eight, roughly at eight. It says nine, but it was really roughly at eight. And then by 11, this, this thing has already made a new low for us. So we took price from here to here. It might not seem like a lot, but I'm going to show you why, why it really matters. It's because we took it here and here. We already knew. We didn't have to think twice. Oh, price is under this level of support. Under this level of support, it went to 15,150 already. We already know what it's going to be. Stress-free. You can put whatever lot size you feel comfortable with, and then it's stress-free. You know price is going that direction. It's Like I said, it's not 100%. But we, we've seen it countless of times where price will tell us where it wants to go and then it'll repeat the same thing and it'll go to the same spot over and over and over. So then we got a new low in the market. So once again, when this new low was made, what happened? When this new low was made, it pulled back, started taking people out, started correcting itself and then ended up continuing. So here we have price going up, price coming back above this level, still coming back above this level. And it's continuing to go up, right? This was at the end of session here. This was at the end of the session here. I only trade in New York session or I only trade when it's close to New York session. And there's, there's some times where price will be in structure or it will go with the structure out of session. And I try my best not to touch it. There's some cases where I will, but I, I have a bad habit of that. I try to trade close to session as possible because if I don't, and I get stopped out out of session, then I'll never know the real truth because there's sometimes where price will stop you out of session and then end up going your way when it comes into session. You're like, wow, I could have just held from London session or I could have held from Asian session. And you don't want to put yourself in a loss when you're just trading out of session anyways. So back under this level, we have another New York session. So New York opens 9 a.m. So this was all out of session, right? This whole thing was out of session. Let's turn this on. All right, so this whole thing was out of session. In session comes, it buys up, buys up, boom. Session, I mean, um, not session, but price comes back under this level. There's a New York session. We know what the target, we can target here and here. Boom, because we know under this level, it's gonna go to here. So from here to here. So this session, we know it's gonna go from here to here. So we're taking sales here keeping our stop loss however we want to do it on a smaller time frame, we can do it just like that or you can do it above previous structure. Like I said, I use 50 points. So what will be 50 points for you? So from this level, 50 points will be roughly around here-ish. I know it's like 51. Yeah, it's 50 points. Just say it's 50 points. <laughs> so roughly around here, this is 50 points. You can keep your stop loss there. And then price is heading under this direction, roughly around, what is that, 11 o'clock? It starts making its way at 11 o'clock. I think, let's say, let's be realistic. I think the most drawdown you would have faced in this trade would have been like 13 points. If you were to enter roughly around this area, the most drawdown you probably would have faced was like 13 to 12, 20 points. And then you would have been able to get 104 and then 168. 168 off of 20 points because most people look at it as like oh your stop loss is all the way up here or your stop loss is 50 points but you're risking it so it's like a one to two one to three bro i'd be like half the time if i was to put my stop loss even 30 points i would still gain a lot it's not about most people look at the risk to reward is like oh if i risk this then it's this but most of the scenarios like i said when price is trading off reaction areas Sometimes you don't even have to go crazy with your stop loss because if price is under your level, one thing is 
if price is under this level, it's going to show some type of reaction for being under that level. And I'm going to continue to show you over and over. So New York session, 11 o'clock. Yeah, 11 o'clock, price starts heading under here. We're taking entries here, 50 point stop loss, and we're targeting this level. Notice how price starts reacting, 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 gets to that level where price is showing us this is the, the last low. So we get to the first target. This is the first target. It starts breaking down. It starts consolidating even. It literally starts breaking down, breaking down, little retest with that 13 points and drawdown, but that's cool. Next, next candle going straight down. It hits the target, hits the target, starts kind of consolidating around this time. Then two o'clock comes in because I know this is, oh, this is one o'clock. One o'clock comes in, price starts breaking down, 115. We finally break that level of support. Boom, 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 boom. Hits our second target. So this was 163 points. With a 0 0.01, that's $160. With a 0 0.1, that is $1,663 with a one lot that is 16,000 something, something. But just, just understand that we just got in this trade, we held our trade and we understood the market, where the market was going over, overall. And this is that trade too, as well. Price came under this level. We knew that price was gonna come to here. We got our target from here to here, stress-free. We didn't have to worry about anything because with price action and market structure is showing you where it wants to go and you can you can be stressed less it's stressing less like this was stress free the trades i took this week i didn't even think twice about it i didn't i didn't have to think twice about it except for that one trade that i took at at the end of session this is um where was it so i'm i'm gonna show you but i should have never did that like i told y'all this was at the end of session this is at the end of session like like right there at the end of the session and you don't want to trade this, but I'm going to show you an example of when I was trading and I could have just made sh trading stress-free on me. But all right, so we're going to continue to break this down, right? Um, <clears throat> let's go back to the one hour. I use the one hour a lot for the people that are wondering when I marked up my charts. I don't know. I'll be telling people things and I have to say it countless of times and I've said it in my videos. I mark up on the one hour time frame. Um, I use, you can use pivot highs, pivot lows to help you only on the one hour time frame. You can use it on other time frames, but I find it most effective when it comes to the one hour time frame. Do I go higher than this time frame? Not necessarily, not really. If I want to make like some crazy, you know, prediction on the market, then I'll probably go to the daily, but I always stay on the one hour time frame when I'm marking up my charts. My entries come from the one hour time frame, maybe the 30 minutes here and there. And just depending on if I see something on the smaller time frame when it comes to trading in the markets. But it's rare. It's rare that you see me on a smaller time frame. Most of the time, all my trades come from the one hour time frame and breaking the levels of the swing lows or swing highs. So that is what I mark up on. Um, I, I use sessions sometimes, but it doesn't really matter because I know what time to trade. Uh, what else? What else? Yeah, that's pretty much it. So anyways, back to the scenario. Um, price hits our swing low, target to hit. So from here to here, New York session, you were trading. You, you, you didn't even have to look at your chart the whole day, bro. You would have just got in this trade. Price is under this level, set your stop loss. You could have walked away from your charts for the day. You literally could have walked away from your charts for the day. Boom. TP1, TP2 hit or TP2 hit because I know in MetaTrader, it only lets you have one TP. So TP2 hit, right? Then the next day it trades out a session, does whatever it wants, does whatever it wants. This is coming into session right here. Coming into session right here, right? And price ends up dumping, making a new low. Yeah, making a new low. Yeah, this is all in session. Now, I want to explain to y'all, and this is going to be a perfect example because you're not supposed to trade every single day. Now, this day you could have traded if you was on like a time frame scaling down from here because price made a low, started correcting itself, and then came back and tried to take out that low. Now, this day was pretty choppy, and you can pretty, pretty much tell when a day is going to be choppy based off how it's moving at open. Now, I'm not going to explain in detail without confusing you, but let's say right around here. All right, so right around here, price starts to, this is actually, 
I'm in the wrong time right now. I'm in the wrong time. Okay, so 9.30, we have price pushing up. Price starts to push down. Price starts pushing up. Price starts pushing down. And it's just staying in this area. So I'm not going to lie. I don't know about y'all, but when price is like consolidating in the first like hour or two, two hours, I'm getting off the charts. If, if by 11 o'clock price is not showing some direction, I'm getting off the chart. I cannot stay on the charts for that long. It literally hurts my brain. This To this point, I used to love being on the charts a lot, but now it's like, okay, now I got to get off the charts. I'm wasting my time. I'm wasting my time because nothing is presented to me. So why am I still, why am I still looking at the charts? If nothing is presented to me, I'm going to set my alert and I'm going to walk away from the charts. I'm going to set my alert. And I'm just going to walk away from the charts, right? So with this being said, we ended up having equal lows, swing lows in this area. It ended up making another low under here. These were extra indications of price being bearish, still making lows. So after it starts making lows, it ends up buying up, ends up buying back up to that level that we're looking for, right? ends up buying up to that level we're looking for. London session comes. This is a perfect example of the structure. This is a perfect example of the structure, right? Price ends up coming here and selling back under this level of support. It ends up selling back under this level of support, right? Now, you would be sick if New York session was to come and take you out, but in this scenario, it didn't do that. But notice how it wouldn't even matter because later on in the day, let's say right roughly around here, 930 comes in. You still have an entry. Just because you didn't enter up here doesn't mean you're missing out on anything. You can still get an entry here. You can still target this level and this level, and you'll still be fine. I don't know why I'm like this. Don't ever feel like you're missing out on anything. Please never feel like you're missing out on anything because what this causes it's because you'll see this, you'll see this and you tell yourself, man, I could have caught that during that time. Bro, if you don't take your ass to sleep, bro, if you don't go to sleep, like, bro, you should not be on, you should not be on a NASDAQ chart at 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock in the morning or whatever time it is for, I'm an EST. So this will be 12 o'clock in the morning, one o'clock in the morning. There's, you should not be on a NASDAQ chart at one o'clock in the morning, bro. If you don't go to sleep, bro, and, and wait for New York session, and then start trading, like, bro, it, it just, it's, it's bad for you, bro. And long-term, you're going to see that. It's going to be bad for you if you continue to stay on the charts. Like, literally think about it as a job. Like, trading is a career. Tra trading is a job. It's a, it's a flexible job where you could be on and off and still make money for to pay your bills at the end of the month. It's a flexible job. It's still, you still got to wake up and do the work. You still got to wake up and do the tasks that you need to do so you can get your paycheck. But some of you guys, like, when you're, when you're trading, it's like you're not doing the right task and you're not going to get paid because you're not doing the task that you're told to do or you're not doing the task that you need to do so you can get paid. Some of you guys come into work late. Some of you guys come into work way too late. Not saying come in way too early, just come right on time and then do the task that you need to do. And then the day is over, you go home, you enjoy your life, and then you come back the next day. Same way with trading. You come on the charts, you try to find a setup, you try to do some tasks. And then if, it, if, if today's a good day, if today's a busy day, you're going to make money and then you're going to go home. You're going to be happy. Go with your family, whatever you need to do. Go home, be happy, and then come back the next day. Don't be fucking a fiend, bro. That shit is not good for your health. Don't be a fiend. Don't be on the charts for like 12 plus hours unless, unless you're looking at YouTube videos and you're trying to mark up something and you're learning something. But some of you guys don't even do that. Some of you guys don't even be watching videos for real. Some of you guys be like wasting time just trying to find a setup, see if you can catch some sniper entry. That shit is bullshit because no entry is going to be, bro, I'm going to tell you, you know, I'm not even going to spit game on that, but just know that anybody can fucking, anybody can Photoshop an entry. Just know that. Anybody can Photoshop an entry and be like, oh, I'm the best trader. And then half of the time, the sniper, the quote unquote sniper entry people, bro, they begin stopped out. They begin stopped out more than fucking you ever got stopped out in your whole trading career. They they go through like 50 entries in one day. Like, bro. So, anyways, off topic. Anyways, back under the level for 9:30, we would have been taking sales right under here, keeping our stop loss roughly 50 points. So let's say 50 points. Oh, this is like roughly 50 points too. 
right, so we're taking we're taking our trade. This is 930 right here, 930 drops. We're taking our trade here. We're gonna look for this level and we're gonna look for this level potentially. Most of the time when you're trading, you're gonna trade the last zone that was created or where the correction came from. So the indication, and then there's a correction. So when you're taking that trade, you're gonna target the last area that it bounced off of because most likely that is where it's gonna go. So as we see here, risking that 50 points, and I think it probably only seemed like it seemed probably like seven seven points and nine points in drawdown and then it ended up going from here to here so over 160 70 points 170 points with a 0 0.01 that is 170 dollars with a 0 0.1 that is a thousand and seven hundred dollars and then with a point no with a one lot that is seventeen thousand dollars so it just scales up over time and the reason why i'm saying this is like yo bro if you just wait calm down and trade, you'll see how much money you can really make. So with all this being said, we end up having another um, another indication made. Now I want you guys to understand where these are target levels. These are these are target levels that you can have. So if you was to look at this as a target level, oh, this is where I made that mistake too. Okay, okay, my apologies. This is where no, you're still in the right trade. I'm gonna show you guys what happened after the session ended. Okay, this is the right trade. I wanted to explain how trading, not trading in session can fuck you over. All right, sorry for my cussing, bro. I gotta stop, I gotta stop. <laughs> I gotta stop. Um, all right, so this is the end of session. This is that trade from earlier. You're still holding this trade, price hit target one, and then we're coming down and it's still just stagnant here and we make this new low. Then this is this is when I took that trade I took this trade like roughly, roughly around here. I took that trade, it went down some more and it was good and all. And then price came up and started consolidating, 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 out of session, consolidating, consolidating, out of session, out of session. And then in session comes, it starts to drop, pulls back up at 9.30, 9.30 comes to that zone. We could have been taking sales at this zone when price started rejecting back under this level because that's what we're looking for, price to stay under this level. Then look at the risk i don't know why i use this look at the risk that it could have been so could have could put stop loss above this level 20 points and then we could have been going for this 100 100 points so that's a one to four in some cases but you only seen what you probably only seen what is that you can't even see the drawdown at this point it's like two points of drawdown that you probably would have faced depending on your entry because you could have gotten this entry around here and not face any drawdown. But this is a reaction level. These are reaction levels. When price goes under these levels, it starts going, the, the momentum, the, the, the volume that kicks in when it goes under these levels is, is substantial. Like it's crazy, right? So you could have been in, in a trade like this instead of doing what I did, traded at the end of session, holding this trade throughout New York, set, I meant um, Asian and London session, taking a crazy swap fee because the bigger your lots are, the crazier the swap fees be. You could have been taking a crazy swap fee for no reason. We could have just waited for New York session to open, boom. You could have gotten in some, somewhere around here or roughly around here, let's be realistic or something. And then you could have gotten right here, targeting this level. Price ends up at, at 12 o'clock. So you're in this trade at 11. You're in this trade at 11. An hour later, it's already at your target. Then it breaks your target level and makes a new low corrects itself and continues for the rest of the day. Nine, I'm at four o'clock, it's already down and it has a new low. So now you know, your entry is way up here. Your entry is way up here. You see this and you're up, let's say, let's say roughly around here. This is 194 points. This is 194 points. So that means you're up, $190 or you're up almost $2,000 or you're up 20 bands. That's just how it works. The numbers work. And you would have just like, you didn't even see drawdown that day. Like you didn't see drawdown that day, but my dumb ass, I got into this trade and I think I seen drawdown. Like I got roughly in like right here and I seen like fucking 60 can drawdown for no reason when I could have just entered over here. I literally seen like 60K at drawdown. It's the post on Instagram that I recently post, like, like two, three days ago. Yeah, two days ago, three days ago. 
And I was in drawdown for no reason. I was like, what did I go through to get into this trade? And I entered the trade and it consolidated on me. And it ended up busting up before um, in London session. And then it ended up finally going down just to come back up at that same level that I entered at. The same level I entered at, I could have just entered in New York session. But I was hard-headed and I did whatever I wanted to. And I didn't follow my rules. But it is what it is. I put myself through stress because the way I'm trading is supposed to be stress-free. So why put myself through stress when I don't have to and I could just trade with whenever the market is open? Because remember, you're trading NASDAQ. So NASDAQ, if some of y'all don't know, is the top 100 tech stocks. So stocks, if you don't know, they really open, the pre-market opens at 4 o'clock, 4 a.m. EST. It opens at 4 a.m. EST, my apologies. And orders don't even, some, some brokers don't even allow you to place orders at the time. The volume's pretty low, but there's people looking at the charts and people putting in pre-orders. The market actually opens at 9.30, 9.30 EST or 9.30 AM EST. This is when the orders are being filled. The orders are being completed. The orders are just being punched, punched in. All the, the money is moving. Basically, money is moving at 9.30. So why in the hell am I trading NASDAQ when there's no money open? Like the, the, the stock market is closed. The actual market, Wall Street is closed down. So why am I on the charts at 12 o'clock at night looking at NASDAQ thinking I'm going to catch some crazy trade or something? The market doesn't even open at that time. The market is not even open. Stocks are not moving. Nothing is moving except for in Forex. This is, this is where they're getting you at because Forex is the only thing that's con constantly moving 24 seven, except for from what, like five to six o'clock. And then it closes for that, like that one hour. But Forex is constantly moving over and over and over and over and over and over. I'm be honest, when it came to trading stocks, bro, it was faster to learn because I knew that stocks were closed. I knew the market would close, so I couldn't place any trade. Like, you dead ass could not place any trade on any broker. It would say market wait to market open. And that would take the time. So I would take that time that the market is closed, which was it closes at 4 p.m. EST, and it opens back up at 9.30. So I would take all that time to be on a, like, to, to learn or to do something else with my life other than be on the charts. I'm trying to get you guys to understand that being on the charts 24-7, hours a day or whatever it is, did I say, it? yeah, 24 seven hours a day, whatever the case might be is not healthy for you. It's not good for you. And it's not helping you. Honestly, people think that, oh, the more chart, the more I look at charts, the better I get. No, bro, that, that's not how it works. The more you implement, the more you implement your strategy or whatever you want to call it, the way you trade, the more you implement that chart on that. Oh, I got so much running through my head. The more you implement that to the charts, the more you implement your strategy to the charts is how you learn because you'll start to pick up things. The more you trade, the more you trade in a sense of the more, the more setups you get, the more high quality setups you get, the more setups you get in general, you're going to start to understand that you're going to understand what I'm trying to tell you. Like, it's just some, sometimes where you're like, okay, I don't really like this setup too much. So I'm only going to take these kinds of setups or I, I like trading during this time, or I like trading this period. You figure that out by implementing how to, like how you trade, you implement that into the market so you can overall learn what you like in the market. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't even like, it's all about you, bro. It, it depends on what you like, because I have, I have a discord and uh, like, I would say probably like 75% of them trade ICC and the other other percentage just trades however they want to trade. And I'm cool with that because it's how you want to trade. It's how, it's how you want to look at the markets. It's, it's how, it's how, however you want to do it. Like, honestly, I'm here because I'm showing you like, Hey, this is what I do. I think it's pretty effective. So here, here, let's see if it works for you. Like, right. That's the only reason I'm here because I'm like, Hey, this is what I do. I know people struggle with, you know, making money in the markets or it's not even about making money. Because you're not going to make money if you don't know how to get in and out of the markets. If you don't know how to get in and out of the markets, you're not going to make money long term. It's just not going to work. If you don't know how to get in and out, you're not going to make money. So it's like you shouldn't even be thinking about how much money can I make this week? It should be how can I get in and out of the market safely without being stress free? That's literally the whole goal. How to get in and out of the markets without being stress free. That is the whole goal to trading, how to get in and how to get out for stress free, stress free. I don't have to worry about anything. Yeah, the market doesn't always go my way, 
But if you trade the way that you need to be trading, then you won't be stressed out. It won't hurt as bad because some of you guys take these losses and it's because you wasn't following the rules in the first place. You lose and it hurts more because because you wasn't following what you need to be doing. You did some dumb stuff. I almost cussed there. I stopped myself. You almost you did some dumb stuff and it didn't work out for you. Now you're mad because you did the dumb stuff. And now you're looking at yourself like, dang, why did I do that dumb stuff in the first place? But it's too late because you can't get a refund from the market. They took your money. Now you're mad because you did some dumb stuff and you lost money. And it's like you're at a point where you're like, oh, and 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 top of that, some, sometimes you do some dumb stuff. You do like a dumb trade or you over leverage or whatever the case might be, blow your account or lose a lot of money where you don't trade for the session that you need to trade in. And then price goes crazy. Like I can, probably can tell that somebody was probably trying to sell this. They was like, oh, Nas made a new low. So I says, you know, it's going to correct. But they was trying to sell this, sell this, sell this, sell this, blew their account overnight. New York session comes in and we're trading the markets and they're like, oh, I can't because I blow my account overnight. That's mostly like the scenario with half the people that I know. Right. So back into structure, because I keep going off topic. My apologies. But all right. So. I just really want to hide this. All right. So then we have price making a new low. This is something you could have continued to hold because price ended up showing you that it wants to continue down. So let's say you roughly closed around here to be realistic. This is the end of the day. Normally, I close my trades at the end of the day because I don't want to hold overnight because I don't know. If it makes a new low in this scenario, if it made a new low at the end of the day, I'll just close because I know price is going to correct itself. I just know when price makes a new low, it's going to correct itself. So I don't try to be in that sometimes. It just depends on what the case might be. I haven't did a swing trade in a long time, but yeah. So we ended up having a new low in the market. Out of session, it starts correcting itself. Out of session, it starts correcting itself. Nine, nine o'clock comes in. Nine o'clock comes in. Remember, there was a low over here that was first made when price broke this level of support. So you could have used that and took the same sales back down to the target that you need to take it to. So roughly around here, this is that target. Price makes another indication, corrects itself, and then back under this level, more bearish structure, more bearish sales in here. And it's just a rinse and repeat process. It's really just letting price tell you what it wants to do. <clears throat> yeah, that's pretty much the NASDAQ market. We have a new low in the market. So what is it gonna do? It's gonna correct itself. And then what is it gonna do after that? It's gonna continue later on. If not, it'll probably break this swing high. And then it'll probably be telling us, hey, I'm making a high above this level. Because I'm making a high above this level, make sure I don't come back and go back up that way. That's pretty much it. And some people be like, so what do you do when it buys? Bro, it's, it's, it's the same thing. <laughs> Bro, it's the same thing. Some people are probably like, how the world did he flip his charts like that? It's the same thing. When it comes to buys, it's the same thing. Price makes a high, corrects itself comes back above this level. It's the same thing. Nothing changes just because you're like, I don't know why people think this, but just because you're on a different time frame, just because it's a different pair, just because it's a different, different, um, what was I going to say? A different trend. That doesn't mean anything changed. ICC works both ways. It, it's not just buys or it's not just sales or it's not just one pair or it's just not one time frame. It, it's literally on every time frame. I just wouldn't scale down to the smaller time frame. But it's, it's on every time frame. I just wouldn't do it on the smaller time frame. The smaller time frame is a little bit more confusing, but you can still find the swing highs and swing lows in the scenario. So something like this was the swing high and made a low under this level where you could have took sales off of this or a swing lows here because it's just too much. But I can see I can see it now because the swing highs and swing lows are the lowest points in the market that price was at. Here was our swing highs. Here's our swing highs. Price ends up breaking the swing lows, making a new low, taking sales back onto this level after price does this correction and then continues later on. Another indication, a correction, and then back under here was taking sales. But I think from here to here, it's like 10 points. So 50 points would have been all the way up here. So above previous structure, taking sales, you would have faced like what? Five points in drawdown. 
you know, five points and draw down ticket. Like, th- just just don't trade on a one hour time frame. I don't even know I'm telling you guys this. Just don't trade on a one hour. I meant one minute time frame. Like, just don't trade that. Anyways, I'm over here confusing people, bro. All right, so um, I got a plane to catch. No, it's not today. I don't know why I keep saying today. I'm going to be in Miami. I know this is irrelevant to the whole conversation, but I'm going to be in Miami tomorrow. Um, I'm gonna be in Miami at like 6 p.m. And I'm going to be at this Sway Markets event. This is not a promotion, but I use Sway Markets and I'm currently just trying to get my hedge fund on Sway Markets. I'm trying to get myself situated because I'm not just trying to be some average Forex trader, bro. That's not the whole goal. Um, my whole goal is to you know start a hedge fund, provide people is one start a hedge fund, start a banking like a banking system where people can invest and make money long term because the banks are robbing you. But I'm going to risk my capital and use it as an opportunity to provide for other people. Um, I can make a YouTube video about my financial fusion business. Um, what else was it? Oh, and I'm just trying to make myself the most legit trader ever, like such as getting my license. Overall, you know, connecting with other businesses. I might trade for some banks i don't know yet but i've been told that i can trade for some banks if i wanted to and i don't know how i feel about that yet but yeah um i'm gonna open the chat up for questions if you have questions please don't ask any dumb questions please don't i'm not looking at any other charts please do not ask me about looking at charts i'm only looking at nasdaq i'll only trade nasdaq it's not a disrespect thing it's just a thing where i don't want to mess up my own head and yeah, just don't ask any dumb questions. Ask some serious questions. Um, chat is open, and I'm gonna stop recording now, and I'm gonna put this in.